might be a very short um, working group meeting um, and just sort of get a recap in and a status on some of the stuff from yesterday. So um, I'll figure out oh, and I'll hopefully get everything edited and up tomorrow from yesterday's thing. I just really wanted to say a big thank you to um, to everybody for, for for all the effort that got put into doing those demos, scrambling for resources to be able to deploy things, and it, it was pretty amazing. So um, I, I really, really, really appreciate it. And we did, I don't know if you are watching KubeCon, but on stage this morning, um, much to my surprise, I did not know that was going to happen. OKD got a big shout out in one of the keynotes that Red Hat did. Um, Ooh, on, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, so Red Hat had a sponsors keynote, and we decided to use it for um, saying happy birthday to OCI. Um, Urvashi Mohani and Sally O'Malley did the presentation, and in it um, they mentioned OKD um, a, a couple of times. So I um, I tweeted that, and that was that was really very nice to see because we don't we don't have a lot of brand recognition out there. <laughs> Um, shall we say we're kind of overshadowed by our big brother OpenShift, but um, that's that's okay because um, we get a lot of benefit from that too. So um, yeah, so that was really nice. So I don't know, um, is everybody on this call also um, following along on KubeCon? Uh, I I hadn't, but I probably will because why not? All right. Well, um, in the chat, I put the the Google Doc again. So if you're attending, if you could sign into that. Yeah. But to see how much they're gonna make me pay to do it, but I'm I'll probably show up because why not? Well, the thing I think the cheaters way, just the back door, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm recording this, is if you are a member of um, the Cloud Native Foundation Slack. Or mm -hmm. If you're there. If you go in to the Slack channels, you'll see number one, number two, number three, and all of these other Slack channels that are set up specifically for KubeCon. And um, to be quite honest, I think the more interesting thing today, there's chat through the Intrato platform hosted thing, which mm -hmm. is really hard to figure out and disappears after the event. And then there's right. Slack that, um, the Cloud Native Foundation has set up for all the KubeCon different tracks. Um, and so I'm hanging out in Slack. I have one window open for the booth because I'm on booth duty. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the Slack is really where the networking is going on. Sure. And you can always watch stuff after the fact. But there are, after each talk in Intrato, there is a chat room for this in Slack for those speakers. So, and well, then. pretty much everything is pre recorded for KubeCon. There's very little live. Um, oh, good. Well, then I'm just going to sign up for yet another Slack workspace, I guess, because mm -hmm. that's, that's probably fine, I'm sure. All right. So today I'm going to share my screen. Hey, Christian. I. We're, I think we're all a little burnt out. I'm, I'm a little. <laughs> Yesterday this, was was, that was rough. Pretty awesome. By the end of the day, <laughs> I, I I actually literally had almost lost my voice because I was maybe not talking as much as some of the presenters, but it was I first use of my voice after vacation. Um, so I wanted to say again on record, thank you to Christian and Charo and every one of the working group members who presented it was i know a big effort um to get the resources to do that charo uh, i know we just hired you and we put you on the red hot red hat hot seat a number of times but you came shining through um you know neil um you and dusty uh, i so appreciated having the fedora representation on that mm -hmm. um, session that was you can't, you can't do better than that, right? <laughs> well, really, thanks. You really can't. Um, uh, and I I need um, to, and I know the OpenStackers aren't probably here today, but um, 
it was wonderful to close on the OpenStack one and have that private cloud full open source stack as the closer. Um, so I, I'm going to start making a, a bigger deal and try and get some of the open stackers to come more often to these things. But that was yeah. for me. For me, that was really good because the yeah, bringing that community in too was very 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 nice. As far as viewership, I think over the arc of the day between um, what I could see with interactions with people, we had about 100 to 125 unique people who actually were engaged in the day who like asked a question stayed online for more than 10 minutes or whatever it was um, the actual viewership which is different than engaged people they mm -hmm. were um, from Facebook alone there were 700 different unique viewers um, and in um, Twitch there were 600 not 600 465 what did I say 462 viewers um, so that's people coming in at different times, whether it was from the tweets, looking for a few minutes. Um, and I don't have the YouTube live stuff because YouTube, unbelievably, because with Google Compute, you'd think they'd be faster. But um, their analytics page only shows um, the number of people who engaged. And I think there were 146 people engaged. But it's kind of wonky. And the viewer number is usually bigger on YouTube than either of the other two platforms, but we won't know for a few days. Um, so the other aspect of this is it's, um, it was a very long day, um, and which you saw in Blue Jeans how I paused at different points to grab chunks so that I could download the videos because the videos, if they're longer than two hours, it's really hard on um, anybody's computer to edit the videos. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to edit all those videos. I thought I could turn them around last night, but it didn't happen. So, and KubeCon is happening today and tomorrow. So I'm going to try and get all of the videos done and out the door, at least on the playlist um, by the end of day tomorrow. Um, and that'll be pushing it, but that's that's my goal. Um, I also am going to get dental work done tomorrow afternoon. So, you know, we'll see how that all works out. Um, the, the I am I, I can't say enough that those kinds of events um, are huge for us building the brand of OKD. Um, I, I can't think whether I said this before I hit the record button or before. We also got a shout out this morning on the keynote stage at KubeCon, um, the Red Hat sponsored speech, which we never really do to talk about ourselves or Red Hat products. We used it this time to say happy birthday to OCI, um, the Open Container Initiative. And in that, um, Urvashi Mohani and Sally O'Malley uh, did two great mentions of OKD as users of OCI. And, you know, and so we got some brand awareness from that, hopefully. Um, so if you look on my Python DJ Twitter feed, you'll see that I took a screen cap because I was so surprised. Um, and did that. So that that's really for us now. Um, there's two sides of the coins: is continuing to do all the work that we're doing, and building on getting the operators there and everything else, and keeping the release cadence and incorporating people's feedback. So that's the work that we normally do, and also starting to engage with the public in terms of people who are using OKD. And so one of the folks who was on um, the call most of the day yesterday was um, a gentleman from Red Pill, and I think um, Neil and I were talking about this a little bit in the chat. Um, Red Pill is is migrating from 3.11 OKD to 4, so Pepin um, is a great use case for OKD in production. So I'm going to start looking for those people and try and get them to do little case studies or little snippets um, that we can publish and because I don't, there is no gatekeeping from OKD. We really don't know who's using it. <laughs> you know, for good than, or ill. Yeah, for good or ill. And we do know that it gets downloaded quite a bit. I don't have the the numbers or the stats or anything. But there's just basically no gatekeeping. Um, so uh, 
it's it, engaging and, and doing things like yesterday um, help us get these people out of the closet, get them to give us feedback, um, and enable them to do things, um, it, you know, enable us to know what they're doing with OKD and get that feedback into OpenShift, into all the other things as, as well. So um, that's, you know, that's sort of my quick and dirty update on um, what's going on um, or what went on yesterday. Um, I will, as soon as I get the videos all up done, I'm going to do a recap blog post. And if you had slides that you did with your presentation, um, share them with me if they're Google Slides, and I'll include them in the recap blog post. And I'm, theoretically, I'm supposed to have that done by the end of day Wednesday, but I'm getting a crown on my tooth, and that's just not going to happen tomorrow. Um, so I probably won't be talking on, on Thursday too much after they grind down my tooth. So anyways, that's my spiel. That's my, this is my gratitude. Um, these, this is one of the things I'm grateful for you guys for doing all this work, so thank you. Um, and so I'm wondering um, if you have any update, Christian, on OKD4 to share with us today or where we're going? Um, yeah, just a short one maybe. Um, so for 4.6, we're still experiencing, uh, experiencing some issues with OVN. Um, it's on master, so uh, the same with OCP. Um, yeah, working on that uh, to get preview builds for OpenShift or OKD 4.6 um, as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, Vadim sent me. He, Vadim has his anniversary today, so he can't be here. Um, I think that's a good excuse. Uh, and he's also working on preparing a new version of the installer. Um, yeah, that's kind of the quick updates from me. Uh, not, I haven't had time to uh, to write up the enhancement for the uh, operators to get them uh, released on OKD more, uh, but that's going to be happening before our next meeting. There was um, yesterday there was a mention about the Fedora containers. Um, oh so, yeah, I um, uh, I think. Clement Clement is back from PTO. I'll reach out to him uh, as well and set that up. So we'll yeah, revive believe, the container SIG. I believe that he wants to set up some kind of dedicated workshop to like kickstart the whole thing. And so we yeah. should figure that out and get a date set up and maybe take advantage of the fact that Fedora now has this virtual platform thing. So we can all like just jump in and start um, figuring that stuff out. Yeah. So. Um... And I think you're referring to hop into yep. that we used for Nest. Um, and I, I have actually I have access to it as well. I paid for it. It's a nice it. system. Yeah. I was generally pleased with it. Yeah, we paid we or I didn't pay for it, but <laughs> I, I paid for half the contract for it. Um, so OSPO, our open source group, paid for one half, and I paid for the other half. So if we want to host a joint meeting or something like that, um, we we should try and do that. So. Let's maybe we could get um, Clement to come to a, one of these, and we can just discuss how how to move it forward. Um, yep. Or, or if um, Clement and Christian um, want to chat about it, and just let me know. <clears throat> yeah, maybe maybe it's even going to happen before our next meeting, but I'll I'll definitely invite him to come here as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should do that soon. So I hope that can happen next week. Probably. I haven't. I, I was. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was happening this week, but there was no updates on the issue. So, so what I would suggest is that maybe we um, do something like a joint meeting, the OKD working group and the container working group, and maybe use the next two weeks from now time to do something, and then just give him a half an hour um, to talk about what they what they're how they want to kickstart it or kickstart it then. Um, and do something so I think he, he's really um, trying to set up a two-hour workshop um, that kind of does a work, walkthrough and then also like a hacking session to get things started. Because I don't think there's too many active members of the Container SIG right now. Yeah. So it's Clement who set that up. Um, I joined in from the beginning, and I, I'm not sure, Neil, you were probably there as well. 
I've been there for a while when it was alive and then when it died. <laughs> yeah. Can you yeah. put the, in the chat? Can you put the link to their their landing page in Fedora Land for me, and we can add it add it in here. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes when SIGs die, there's a reason for it because there's not enough um, there there. Yeah. The, big, the the main reason that the container SIG died off was um, the the OpenShift origin community that essentially supported it in the beginning uh, stopped caring. And OpenShift stopped being buildable and runnable on Fedora. Yeah. And a lot of the infrastructure that was being built around it was actually developed by the OpenShift team, and those all rotted away. And so it got to a point where nothing worked, and there was nobody there to help because nobody cared. And so naturally the SIG just fell apart. Yeah, and I, and I, I watched that happen too. So it, it's kind of, you know, and that's why I'm so thrilled about the, the collaboration and how it's worked with the Fedora Core OS group. And, and I'd like to like to make sure that continues to happen here. So um, let me just see if I have your chat here. There's actually the issue, uh, I, I just pasted it in the chat. Um, about the next meeting and somebody posted a when is good uh which i think is probably like a doodle uh to find the uh, to find a good time for everybody so um you could probably just enter uh yeah whenever you can in there and then we'll hopefully find a good time for everybody mm -hmm. yeah okay good that's a good one and then we'll just grab all i'll grab all of that that um put it in the notes here. Uh, you're getting to listen to me. I have a link to that all the way back. So that's um I think that's our next thing, prior, figuring out the um, the operator roadmap is probably should be the major topic for the next OKD working group meeting, if, if you're willing to take that on and um, get that issue listed. You could review that next time. Does that sound? What's that for me? Yeah, that was for oh. you, Christian, yeah. Or Charlie. Um, or Charo, or who yeah. So I, I, I will try to write up the enhancement, but I, um, I'm pretty booked for the next two weeks already. So I'm not sure how much time I can actually do and dive into the actual operators there. Um, I, I will try to, to set up or to, to write up the enhancement though. Okay. So we can maybe use that as a starting point. Yeah. Maybe we can split the work if uh, Charo can also uh, help out maybe. I, I would I would like to I would like to have a situation where not every work is only on, on one pair of shoulders. Well, so the, because the you don't thing. we don't want to wait. Yeah, always forward, always forward. Yeah. Don't wait for anything like well, a train. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I I think what my goal is is if we can get the enhancement request put in, and the ones that um, have other communities around them. That we work with those communities um, as well. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. maybe the service mesh folks, or um, I don't know, whatever it is. But, but I think what we need is that starting point and that list. Yeah. And if we can use the next time um, to go through those and see where we need to reach out to people, because the, the one thing that I'm a little concerned about is because their operators come and go, and we are going to get more and more of them. Is that um, if we're holding the bag, <clears throat> excuse me, for maintaining the community versions for OKD, and we don't have a connection to that, we're going to be in trouble. Yep. I mean, yeah, it'll, be, I, I, it'll, be, it'll be a repeat of before, is which was we we don't want that. So is essentially, what at least for the enhancement um, proposal, what I want to make sure that all the at least the Red Hat made operators that all of them get released for OKD 
by their teams. So we, right. as a working group, don't have that additional work because we, we won't be able to do it. We won't right. be able to go into every operator and fix it up and then also maintain that for all releases. That's the thing the teams have to do themselves. So they, it's essentially like packaging. You have to, they have to release for that platform. Um, right. And they have to do it by themselves. And yeah. One thing that I think would be, and one thing that would be nice to see would be um, on the Fedora side, like giving people the tools and tutorials and things like that for being able to build operators. Because yeah. like, I want to build an operator and I have literally no idea how to do it. And all the documentation I read makes me more and more confused on how to do it. And it's it's just, I, I feel lost in a sea of, of buzz speak and confusion and technical confusion, and that's not helpful. Um, and I, in order to help better support having a larger community of operators, we should make sure that that is something that people can feel self-sufficient in learning how to do this. Yeah, well, and the other thing is, um, I can reach out to the operate. Uh, I also do community work for the operator framework folks. Mm -hmm. so once we have a there, there, you know, we mm -hmm. know what that hack fest is. We can get people like Michael Revnik, um, uh, the Josh Woods, Jay Dobies, uh, who wrote the book on operators, um, mm -hmm. to come and participate in that. And so it's not on the OKD working group. Um, those guys are. All three of them are awesome resources, um, and I think better teachers. Mike Matt Dorn is another one um, that I've had come and, and teach um, at the Commons um, how to build an operator. And all they have to do is flex a little muscle to get it to be how to build an operator for OKD. And I, they're exactly. I, I think we should really provide that documentation and together with Fedora make make that a clear path. But um, we have to draw the line somewhere between the OKD working group and the operator hub uh, special interest group, for example. Uh, those would be the ones you, you may be wanting to approach for getting yeah. operators onto the platform. While right. OKD, the working group, we're, we're really just working on the core operators, which are part of OKD, of OpenShift. Uh, yes. of OpenShift. Yeah. Um, so anything else is like a feature we will not support from our side um, because it's just not our realm here. Yeah. Obviously, so, we, want, we want people to use that, but yeah, we, we're really focused on the core. So from my perspective, the way I think that that should evolve towards is there should be a corresponding Fedora SIG or team or whatever that is actually focused on building up Fedora as a platform for making operators and supporting applications and stuff like that. Because the container SIG will help make it possible for people to have the, the ingredients they need to run applications on a Fedora platform. But having the, 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 the tooling to produce things to run those applications um, in, in OpenShift or OKD or wherever, or Kubernetes, whatever you want to call it, um, we, we don't have a specific group for doing that. And the operator framework, if it's going to build a community, if you want to like seed a community development and interest in this particular pattern of running services and infrastructure on, on Kubernetes platforms, that's probably a place to start. And so if there is going to be some kind of community there, maybe a SIG that's connected to Fedora to do that would help make it so that it's a lot more accessible. But what is so special about um, uh, running operators on Fedora? We are we are using the uh, the operator framework since two two years now. And nothing. There's nothing several... special. I, okay. I think I think what I'm what I what I would like to take a step back here for a second is I just think it's education and documentation. Okay. I, I don't. It, I'm, I'm not positive you need a Fedora operator sig. Um, the main. Pause. Let me just finish. Okay. Because, um, Red Hat has donated the operator framework, um, the SDK, and the OLM side of things is all part of the CNCF and is an incubated project. So mm -hmm. there will be SIGs over there for Fedora people to join, and they can create a subset there um, if they need to, um, rather than a Fedora operator thing. Um, and I, I know that's not, not the normal mode, but that would be to me the natural place to make requests for more, you know, uh, more documentation and to donate that 
and to build awareness for Fedora in the Kubernetes world would be a better way for doing community development and doing some collaboration um, in that space, rather than so, doing something separately that might die on its own if it doesn't have care and feeding from um, the operator framework community. So here's my flip side of this. The, in the Fedora, in Fedora, there are people who develop applications and services for running um, to support the Fedora community. Right now, all of those things are packaged up and installed on different VMs. The thing is, uh, they want those to move to being things that run on top of OpenShift for good or bad. There are no patterns, there's no procedures, there's no practices, there's nothing for how to do that. If you want people to be able to do that, you need, it's not just that there has to be a community upstream, there's always a community upstream for all the crap. I honestly, it doesn't matter. The problem is that you also need, you need communities where people are actually doing work, who are actually able to take advantage of those technologies. That's the reason why Linux distributions, while they, like OpenSUSE and Fedora, they both use RPM, they both have their own packaging guidelines, they all do their own packaging stuff. But there's also the RPM upstream community where things that do make sense to put together there happen there. From my perspective, I see operators in the same manner. They, it's essentially the foundational aspect for delivering applications and services on a Kubernetes, for lack of a better phrase, operating system platform, right? And so er, different communities are gonna have different patterns, different styles, different guidelines, different tools. And like when I talk about with the container SIG and having people be able to make operators using those, the idea is that you take Fedora content and you build upon it, upon it and be able to make operators and stuff, and they would be pushed into the Fedora registry. They could even be pushed out to Operator Hub. Yep. Uh, that probably is a good thing to do. And there should be a liaison between the Fedora side and the and the upstream part. I'm not disagreeing with that part, but the problem is that without Without a way to distribute that community load, you have two potential problems. The first is the, the there will be so many people in one spot that there is basically no way to give anybody any attention, which is what happens with Kubernetes right now. Um, and that's why Kubernetes communities tend to splinter out and spread out and things like that. Or you start you start specializing and splitting and subgrouping and things like that, and that's the natural pattern that tends to happen already today, right? So you wind up having, you know, you have an operator, you have a you have a release SIG, which then has a sub SIG for, you know, X, Y, Z thing. And those people just, it kind of fans out over time. And where that fans out doesn't matter if it's on CNCF side or the distro side or somewhere else altogether. What I'm saying is that because we have all this, um, we have this nucleus of people that exist in the Fedora community to do these sorts of things. We should have them have the opportunity to be able to make these sorts of things and with Fedora's upstream first ethos also help bring those and spread that back into the upstream project. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an upstream operator community because that would be stupid not to have one, but we also need something to support a, di a diverse set of applications and such because I firmly think that what we're gonna wind up having is we're gonna have so many operators from so many communities with different opinions and different structures and things like that, that it's just not going, it's not going to scale if they're all in one place. And so we need to make sure that the community is structured so that it scales out past that, especially if you want it to be successful. I, I, think you know, I, I agree and I have, I, it, it's kind of like software packaging for Linux distros. Right. Um, and we'll, we'll have to um, make sure that Fedora packages its own operators because we just can't consume or we don't want to consume operators that aren't built with our guidelines elsewhere. They may work, but they're not, you know, not specifically made for the environment, which is the reason why I want to get the Red Hat teams to specifically also release for Fedora CoreOS based operators. And then all the other operators teams that we don't really have, you know, influence on here, uh, we'll have to convince um, because they'll have to, I think it's easiest if it comes from the upstream directly, if the operator team that creates an operator that they have a few release artifacts they want to push out every time 
and um, Fedora Core OS, specifically for OKD, should be one of those. Um, so that is really the goal. So, I mean, if, if that really works out, we would need the the operator SIG in Fedora because there would be nothing to do. All the upstreams would release uh, for for us. But I don't. Yeah, I, there is a little bit of a middle ground. Not all the operators will do that all the time, and there will there will have to be uh, volunteers to pick up that work. Yeah. And, and that has that to happen. Won't yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, I'm not anti creating anything here. Um, I just think there should be some liaison, as you mentioned, uh, Neil, to the operator CNCF SIGs that are just now being set up. They're really <laughs> yeah, I think, no, I, mean, I think we should get the container SIG started again first, then yeah. send a liaison from them uh, to the operator hub, maybe send a liaison from us there as well. Um, and then see how we can grow that operators in Fedora yeah. and I think, environment. Um, I think rather. Clement's idea of doing the hackathon workshop, and you know, it, uh, would Craig put in the link to the book that Josh and Jay wrote? Um, I think we can get get them to come and you know help teach the class um, and give away the book and talk about you know you know how to get involved in all of these other places, but also create some um, educational materials that are Fedora specific, that address, you know, things that are Fedora Core OS, things that are OKD, um, and as a, as a starting point, at the very least. I, I so. still don't understand why, uh, what is uh, Fedora specific about operators, sorry. Nothing. The, the point is that Fedora makes infrastructure applications. And there should be a home for those people to come up with a pattern of how to release them. Ah, okay. And, and that, that, you release operators as container images, right? So we want them to be Fedora-based container images, uh, and okay. those will be running super fine on Fedora CoreOS. The problem with having um, containers, uh, like Fedora containers, is they won't necessarily run on older kernels because they assume the Fedora kernel to be present, so only from that version up, it's really supported, and we, you know, we wouldn't want to run container images on RHEL 7 environment. Oh, geez, don't even go there. Like I've done that Cent before. It's it, you get some very weird bugs when you do that. And on, on the other hand, we don't want to run, um, I don't know, uh, Debian or uh, any other container images uh, on Fedora Core OS if we don't really have to, because we have our own container system that is just out for for running with the Fedora kernel with you know all all the environment in place that the container assumes is there beneath it um, which is why we really want to UBI is a special case because it kind of just works on Fedora as well um, but yeah and it that's kind of the rel 8 UBI universal base image um, so that works fine and is tested uh, but other than that um, it should really be just Fedora Container images are running um, the operators or UBI. That could it could be both, but um, for OKD it could be both. Uh, but you really want a container image that assumes you have a newer kernel there. Yeah, and really the core of it is that because we're we we're starting to have an open shift and there's this push from Red Hat and from other people that we should be running our infrastructure applications in open shift, whether it's a good idea or not is beside the point. That's sort of the thing that's starting to happen. We need to start having practices, procedures, guidelines, and policies about how these things are made and released. Because without that, it's gonna be a it's gonna be insane. It that that's pretty much what it's gonna be. Uh, and and I don't want to make our admins' lives even worse <laughs> than it already is right now. <laughs> They're already having an unpleasant time trying to bring the community OpenShift back online. I don't want to think about how much worse it would be if they also had to try to figure out how to bring all the applications on top of it, and they all worked in inconsistent, weird ways that are not necessarily good patterns for handling, you know, those those concerns. Because like this is all new stuff. This is all new to everybody, and so there are very few people who understand what the good practices are and how this should work and how this is optimized for this case and that case and whatnot. And every application is different. 
And so that's why uh, it helps to, to be able to have that sort of thing, both upstream in the CNCF side, as well as handle sp Fedora specific things, you know, in the Fedora level for Fedora application. Yeah, so I, I think, um, like I put a link into the, the most recent operator intro workshop that Matt Dorn and Michael Revnick, they've been doing these workshops um, for all different flavors, whether you know, internally, externally, at, at different things, asking them and Jay Dobies, and you know, we, we have a, four great people um, who basically are just spending their time now teaching people how to do this. And um, we definitely work with, we'll work with Clement to um, get them uh, to, to help with the hackathon and, um, you know, just record their content and have it be Fedora specific or aimed at a Fedora audience um, probably is a better way of putting it. And um, then, you know, and then we can, and then, you know, spinning up the Fedora operator one, what we did um, for the operator while we were incub incubating the operator framework was we hosted, and we, I've been doing this for the, besides you guys, I work with them on a regular basis, and um, been incubating, um, hand-holding all of the different, everybody from Sysdig and Falco to um, yeah, a bazillion people writing operators and getting them to put them in operator hub.io in, in the operator hub that's embedded in OpenShift. Um, and, and we had to do a whole lot of hand-holding, and that's been going on for the past two years. So these guys now have it down to a science, how to teach it, and, under, you know, and they can flip over to whatever the specific platform is or operating system or ecosystem that they're working in um, on a dime. That, you know, so it's, it's not like we don't have people to do this. We just need the connections and a date and a place to do it. So I think um, you're on the right path, Christian reaching out with Clement um, and connecting there. So for the ones that are Fedora specific and that Fedora community people want to have to run on OKD, we can, we can, we can manage that. That's a, that's a knowable, solvable problem. Um, the, and I, maybe it's not, not a great idea to, to add fragmentation there on the Fedora side by creating yet another stick. Maybe the container stick can also be the operating They could own all stick. of it. It exactly, all of it. Yeah. because it's it's the same realm, anyways. Um, so, yeah, we just need a place in the Fedora land um, where, where where this documentation and you know this knowledge building and sharing can happen. Yeah. So, um, so that for that that side of it. So when you're talking with Clement, mention Matt and Michael and Jay and and Josh, and let's connect all those dots there, and I can help with intros or whatever um, there. The other piece of it is um, supporting your request to the Red Hat engineers team um, to make sure that they do that. And so we'll have to, there'll be some internal stuff that I'll have to help um, negotiate, I hope. Um, and I don't feel like it's going to be that hard of an ask because there's a lot of automation involved. So um, it might be just that. So there's there's sort of two sides to this coin. And, and what you're going through with Fedora, we have gone through with everyone who's in the certified operator program at Red Hat, everyone who's in the community side of things that is doing upstream projects, yeah, these guys got it. So it's we I know we can solve this. So um, and and I want to solve it in a, in a healthy, good, connected way um, with Fedora that um, grows both sides of the fence and maybe yeah. And, and for for OKD specifically, we don't always need. Fedora operators. So, as I as I mentioned before, the UBI ones are expected to work. So, for most Red Hat operators, they won't even need to change big things in their operators. They just need to make sure they they respect the limits or the boundaries that uh, Fedora Core OS sets them. And I think the biggest one is that we don't have Python on the host in Fedora Core OS. We do have in RHEL Core OS. So many operators still assume that and won't therefore work on Fedora Core OS. Now. So if we make them, I think we just had the um, the Vert lib, uh, no, which one was it? Libvert. A Kubevert, a Kubevert operator fixed for that, um, and that's kind of the thing I want to see here. I don't want to add extra work for them to release really a second 
yeah. operator built on, on uh, Fedora, they just have to make sure that the operator, the one they release, will also work on OKD and will also be added to the catalog on, you know, we that we ship with uh, OKD. Yeah. So let's get that enhancement request in, get, the, get it logged, post it <coughs> to the mailing list when you do, so that everybody can give it a thumbs up and, you know, vote for it. Um, yeah, the other thing, oh, the, let's park that for a little bit. Um, the other thing was the Azure um, images for Fedora CoreOS. I sent around a tweet yesterday. <coughs> I should try and find it again to try and get people to upvote that so that it gets on the radar. Do you think that, it says, that this helps? Because I understand that Azure, <laughs> that Microsoft uh, already has a documentation page uh, in preparation for Fedora Coins, uh, but they are, the lawyers are talking to each other, and I don't know if it helps to have a poll uh, if lawyers uh, don't agree to each other since eight months. Since three it's years. Three years, it's, okay, nice. It's been three <laughs> years of arguing between Microsoft and Red Hat. I don't, I it's, don't understand that because it's, 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 yeah, it's, the only pl major platform that does not support it. I don't understand what the problem is. I think nobody understands that. Oh my God. Like it's, yeah. I think oh, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't really like make that. sense to talk about it because yeah. we, we cannot really change anything. We can't do anything issue. about it. Everybody knows about it. Yeah, all of us who have actually been burned by this problem all it's, know the details and we kind, can't talk about it. It's kind of a secret, yeah? Maybe maybe the, the, the solution is Voldemort, I don't think, because <laughs> nobody is allowed to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's there's name. definitely some kind of taboo on it, but like, uh, the yeah. best thing that I can, the best thing that we can do is ask Diane to like poke somebody with a stick to make this like go <laughs> faster, but like there, the amount of, potential success there is so low, but that's the best we can actually do. And yeah. I, I'm not willing to talk about it in detail while this is being recorded. That is... I think I have, a, I have a nicer topic to talk about. Uh, okay. Completely, completely different. Um, uh, I'm, I'm desperately searching for a place where we can collect training material for, for OKD. Because I think there is a lot of people who made uh, videos, blog entries, but everything is spread, spread around. And I, yeah, I, I would love would love to have a place where we can collect that. I know that we must curate it. Um, entries will get old. Uh, I think broken. the idea is that we we would revise OKDIO to actually pull this off. Because I know Diane, mm -hmm. you've been working on adding a couple of sections to OKDIO for this sort of thing. So that might be the right place to put it. Yeah, so we had an, we talked about this a couple of weeks or a couple of meetings ago, um, creating mm -hmm. um, a side page for cookbooks um, mm -hmm. and recipes. So uh, I didn't get to it. I went on vacation instead. Um, but I'm happy to create that landing page um, and have, you know, whomever um, help work with me and do that and give you guys some access to um, editing yep. that that page, just like Joseph has done for me in the past. Um, yeah, because that's, I think, I think that's, that's where, and I, and I love the, I love bringing back the cookbooks and recipes because I'm an old Python person. Um, so it's, yeah. So that, I, I think that's where I, I would like to see it um, live if, if people are okay with that. Um, in my I, I'm actually totally fine with that. Yes, me too. Okay. So I'll put that back on the menu for the uh, thing. I think I had it on the menu. I don't know where it went. Um, I mean, I'm just super happy that we now have OpenShift install create cluster, and that actually works now. <laughs> that's, that's the part that I'm so very happy about. Yes, it would be nice if we would have a big, uh, big button uh, that uh, leads us to a different page where we can collect links and this would be fine. So it's not so spread around everywhere. No. Taro, I see your name is on this too. I'm just going to put it towards the top. Um, so that I remember to do something about it between now and next week. Um, so yeah, this is this is something that it's near and dear to my heart too. Um, 
and creating it in a way that it's updatable. Um, maybe a YAML file that's easy for people to add things um, automatically. And you just put the link in and a description. Um, that some, something along that line. So just give us a little bit of time, and, and we'll figure that out and start thinking about you know what it is that you'd like to see there. We may have to create a couple templates um, so that it, there's some consistency in what we're delivering. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and, and and part of it is it is also everything that we just did yesterday. Uh, I want to find a good home for that on the OKD um, landing page too. So maybe an OKD.io um, videos page or deployment, whatever. But anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, th we do have to do that. And I, my graphic skills, as everybody knows, um, is from MS Paint period of time when I spent time with MS Paint. I know there's probably a Fedora equivalent, but I missed that. And I, but yeah, I'm not a great artist here. So um, yeah, any help that people want to do or uh, mock-ups of what it might look like would probably be helpful. Um, wireframes appreciated, and then we can figure out that. So let's start a side project on that. Maybe Charo and Joseph and I um, can think about that. And, um, yes, for yeah, sure. Move that, move that forward. All right, so um, we got 12 minutes left of what was supposed to be, for me, a very short meeting. Uh, <laughs> and, and it obviously means that I'm not downloading any of yesterday's videos. So um, I'm not actually do, moving anything forward at the moment. Is there anything else that we should talk about? Um, and I would just ask, once you have the update from Clement, um, Christian, could you post something to the working group so that we um, don't wait two weeks to hear what the, the next step is? Yeah, yeah, I think we should maybe um, start off that process uh, a new uh, to find a, a date because I think the, the doodle thing was meant for for this week. Um, this week uh, so, ain't happening. Uh, no. So no, no, this week ain't happening. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just tell him and then I, I may just write an email to him, Matt Dorn, uh, Michael Rivnak, um, and you, Diane, and Vadim uh, to make all our internal. Um, folks uh, set that and then we can kind of yeah include um, Jay Dobies and Josh Woods too um, those um, the foursome I'll put the names in here yeah if you could send me the names again I'll, I'll just send out something and I, I'll do that tonight so we can hopefully plan something um, this week and then uh, publicize that yeah. um, in the coming days yeah all right I will do that and cool. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, so okay. If I could, uh, Go for uh, it. on a separate topic, is anything happening with the uh, samples operator, uh, which is uh, still failing if you don't have the uh, pull secret? Uh, well, that that actually so caused so my recent update to be in a failing state. What the container six stuff is supposed to help fix. Uh, we don't have anything to put in there. That that's kind of the problem. Um, so the the uh, I mean, you don't have to load the samples operator in. Uh, I don't know if we can change the default setup so that it doesn't get activated, but it's not actually required for a functioning OKD system. Okay, so, it so does not just it what does I, not prevent an upgrade if we uh, remove it or set it in a no, it, it, it doesn't like it doesn't force it back on it uh, it's only installed by initial provisioning but once you remove it it or disable it or whatever it, everything stops caring because okay. you, you didn't break anything it just mm -hmm. it'll just update what's already present mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah bruce what did, did the samples did, that are there stay what, what, what i did bruce the samples there yeah um i'll 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 post in the chat, or are you on Slack? Um, I, yeah. I've got a little shell script I put together that when I deploy one, if I want to get all of the templates that the samples operator would load, I extract all of those templates, then cherry pick the ones that I care about, change the the container link to one that it can actually retrieve without a secret, and then, and then manually load those into the OpenShift okay. namespace, and they show up in the catalog. 
Yeah, you posted this that. This feels like that should be uh, done automatically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's a workaround. It's not fun. And, and Charo, is your Rook still working with the yeah. latest upgrade? Yeah, yeah, I'm running 15.4.2, I think, is, is what's running. Yeah, because I, I get this mysterious... Uh, message error saying that you know storage uh, not supported. Uh, let's see. Uh, for for the storage operator, it says unsupported platform for storage class creation. What? After the update. Oh, interesting. Well, then. Might be an issue. But it might. They may have my just PVCs are still broken. up there. Okay. Um, uh, you, you should file an issue on the OKD repo so that Charo can figure it out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Charo, you're the only one of us that has a functioning, like, rook setup on top of OKD. I'm living entirely off ephemeral storage because I don't have money. Oh. Yeah, no, I, uh, no, I set it up uh, off of Charo's uh, blog, and it works worked like a charm. Oh, you know, you know what? I've if you look at the the iPixy branch, um, I actually right. I'll, I need to push an update because I'm using a newer version of Rook Seth now. So it may be that if you're still using the older version of Rook Seth that's included in my GitHub page, that might be the issue. Is there may have been something that that broke with a, a newer 4.5 and that older version of Rook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I based it off of your uh, your GitHub page, uh, sort of, you know, suitably changed for my configuration. Okay. But that that was like a couple of re revisions ago. Uh, oh. yeah. Living on the edge. Yeah, I'm I'm up to my eyeballs in new employee training for the next yeah. couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, oh, it can't be that bad. They gave him the red hat already. What else did you want? Really? Right. I mean, like, you, you skipped, like, so many things that I heard other red hatters have to ha do first. So you're clearly done and ready to go. Yeah. I, I did mine in, like, two days eight years ago. Uh, like, it was like, hey, look at you. This is open shift. Yeah. All right. Have a hat. Bye-bye. Here's some beer. Uh, it was much more than that. And it was, uh, it was actually, I hope it'd be more than that. Even it was like, a lot of fun, but it, it, I, it flew by. So I think I was on premise in, in rally for two days. Or that was, then I flew back to Canada. Anyways, um, I do have to jump um, today at here. I sent you the email, Christian, and I cc'd Charo and Vadim as well. So um, to start the thread internally with the operator framework train, training people. Um, and they may all barf over it now that I've volunteered them all, um, but you know, they've been told. So uh, we should be able to get something going pretty quickly with Clement. Um, so again, we'll see everybody in two weeks, but do pay attention to the mailing list. Um, and if um, you know if we get something in earlier than two weeks from now with Clement set up, I doubt that. But um, we'll we'll just make another call, an ad hoc call. All right, can I let you all go? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all. And go back to just slacking with the KubeCon people now. All right, take yeah, care. Yeah, wiped out from yesterday. <laughs> I'm still tired. <laughs> as, as you all should be, yes. Um, thank you. I woke up early for that. That was <laughs> a little surprising. Yeah, it was but, all good. Yeah. So, hey, Brendan, um, nice yeah. to see you all here, and um, keep on, keep on OK being. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. See y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.